What Crossings does for people who are not preachers is that it allows them to hear a good sermon, even if one might not be preached. All of my imperfections, being smart for generosity. It's become such a way of life for me. Crossings is not a sect of Christianity. Crossings is a tool that we use to understand Christianity. A way of understanding life. It's a lens. It really is good, and it is something new. What I know about Crossings uh, initially came from a couple of uh, Crossings community members coming to a Mockingbird conference in New York City. And we were mostly East Coasters, and so I would think, who is this? Who are these, these gents? And I uh, really enjoyed getting to know them. There was an immediate affinity over matters of the distinction between the law and the gospel, and um, as well as uh, concern might be the wrong word, but passion for. Uh, life in mainline denominations in America and how to bring the gospel as both uh, as good news to to people where they were and it turned out that very different paths had taken us to very similar um, methodologies I guess approaches the law and gospel distinction and it sounds so highfalutin but it's really anything but basically that God speaks to us in two words uh, first, his demand or the should, the ought, and secondly is the promise or the the is and the um, the good news. But when we when I when I talk about law, I think you can say that the law is that which reveals um, who we are, and that can take the form of any number of sort of thou shalt not commit adultery, but it also can uh, take the form of thou shalt be skinny. Thou shalt be successful. And uh, this anxiety that people live under, that they are not measuring up, the sense that there is a, the measure, there's any kind of measure to begin with, that, that is the sign that people are dealing with the law in some form. And a lot of times, unfortunately, the, when you ask people to describe their experiences at church, they will describe an encounter with the law. They will almost never tell you about the gospel. They will tell you about how they were made to feel not good enough, that they were failing all the time, that they were putting up a false front of virtue, that there was a lot of dishonesty, a lot of spin going on, competition for piety and things like that. And this is very pronounced in the evangelical world, but also it, ma it makes its way into the mainline denominations predominantly today in terms of social justice. And are you um, giving enough? Are you virtuous? Are you helping enough? be serving enough and this it just leads to exhaustion and it's not none of these things are bad that people are being asked to do just like whether that applies to personal piety or whether that applies to sort of corporate uh, justice but it, it creates a sense of uh, like you're on a treadmill and then you're never doing enough and so people burn out there's a reason we call it you burn out of church the nuns the duns when you ask them about their experience with church, it's almost always as a gigantic no of some form or some, some form of law. Maybe they heard the gospel initially at one point or they had a conversion experience where they heard the gospel. They heard that, yes, that God actually meets them in their failure, in their sin, in their brokenness, in their rebellion, and suffers and dies for them. The, the shed blood of Christ is good enough, it, 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 it's, it's complete, it's comprehensive, and there's nothing uh, you can do to invalidate it. That is a word that converts people, because we don't deal with any mercy anywhere in the rest of our life. But to hear that there is a free lunch out there, a totally free lunch, it wasn't free to him, but it's free for you, I mean, that's exciting, that's great news. But then what happens is you hear that, then you get to church, and then right back at you with a list of things you gotta do to understand that there's a difference between the law and the gospel and that both play a role is a really uh, life-giving and I think di it's dynamic, it's not, it's not a formula, it's not somehow I say this to you now and I say that to you then, it's living, it's uh, how God is at work in the world to kill and make alive. Um, is that too, too many words?